So you're speaking to a potential prospect on the phone, you think they're gonna be a great client, you spend 60 minutes, 90 minutes with them on the phone, you make an offer and, okay, great, let me speak to my partner, let me speak to my spouse. I cannot make a decision on this phone call. And then guess what? They jump off the phone, crickets, they ghost you, you never hear from them, you've lost the deal. How can we avoid this? Well, I'll share with you how today's video. Firstly, if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is John Pemothy. I'm the founder of adclients.com. We're a marketing education company. We specialize in helping coaches and course creators who sell high ticket programs to generate clients automatically online with sales funnels and paid ads. Come check us out at clients.com. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about this uh, major objection that comes up a lot which is great, that sounds good, I like what you've got, I just need to speak to my partner, I need to speak to my spouse, I need to speak to my wife, my husband, whatever the case may be. And I wanna share with you three things you can do, a couple of which are to avoid this coming up, and then the third one is how to deal with it when it comes up. Before we get into this, we like to talk about these things here on the channel, and I wanna make sure that we're helping you as best we can. Let me know in the comments box down below right now if you've ever spoken to a potential client or you are trying to sell stuff online, what are the biggest objections that you are getting? Let me know in the comments box because if we've dealt with it and we have the answers, then we'll shoot some videos for you on that topic as well. So let's start with the first, uh, the first of three things. How can we prevent this even happening? on the phone. Well, if you're not already, you should have an application form when someone books a call with you. If you are just jumping on the phone with anyone that wants to book a session with you or book a call with you, um, you're actually not building your business in the most efficient way and you're probably wasting a bunch of time on the phone. That's a that's a training for another time. You know, you need to rethink your entire model. People should be coming to you, booking an appointment on your calendar and once they do that, they should be filling out an application form. Right, so that there is a sense of I am I'm wanting to work with you. They are coming to you. So if you don't have that model, that needs to change. For us, if someone doesn't fill out an application form, then we cancel the call. It's that important. So here's the first preventative thing that you can do: is if it's really important for you to know if they have a business partner or a spouse, and you're getting that objection a lot, then you need to add that question onto your your form. So you need to ask on the form, is there anyone else? Is there a decision maker that you need to run this past if you were to invest in some coaching or training uh, on our call? Or if you were to inquire about some coaching or training? And then you could have multiple choice. It could be have yes, a spouse, yes, a business partner, or, or, or no, I make the decisions by myself. Or you could just leave it blank and they can write that out. And then you can have a second, um, not question, but statement on the form that says, please make sure they are available and with you on the call, right? So that's the first thing you can do. And a lot of people will respond to that question in the right way and they'll either say no, they don't have another decision maker, which now you can point back to that on the phone. If you make an offer and they say, great, let me speak to my spouse, you can say, well, you said on your form and then you can refer back to that. And then at that point, you know it's that they're just trying to buy time. And they're probably a bit fearful about making a decision. It's the right thing for them, but they're just a bit fearful. So you now know that to be true because of what they said on the form. And if they do say they've got a decision maker with them, then now they're committing to bringing that person on the call with them. The second preventative thing that you can do is asking them early on in the call. Not wasting 60, 90 minutes, but within the first 10, 15 minutes when you're just getting to know them and asking discovery questions to find out what their situation looks like and what they need help with, um, you can ask them, you know, is there anyone else that makes these decisions with you? Is there anyone else that's in this situation with you? If you were to invest in some coaching or training, I'm not saying we're going to talk about that today, but if you were going to, would you have to run that past someone else? And if they say no, great, progress with the call. If they use that objection at the end, you can refer back to the same thing as if they mentioned it on the form. And if they say, yes, there is, then you find out what that situation looks like and then you reschedule the call. Okay, great, then here's what we need to do. I don't wanna waste your time today. Uh, I wanna make sure that, you know, if this is the right solution for you and if I've got something that will help you rather than having to re-explain it to that other person, let's just have a call together. So let's reschedule for tomorrow at four and uh, and you can bring your 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 partner or your spouse on the line with us. So that way, you've only used 10, 15 minutes of your time as opposed to an hour to 90 minutes of a full, you know, enrollment call. And the third thing is if you haven't done those two things and you get to the end of the call 
and they whip out the spouse objection or the partner objection, then we need to know how to handle it. And, and the first thing that you need to do is you need to decide if this is a true objection, like it's actually fact, they, they cannot and will not make a decision without their spouse or without their partner, right? Or is it a cover up? And this is really important to understand because a lot of people will use that as a cover up because they just want time to think themselves, right? Now, oftentimes it's not actually the best thing for that client to think about it, right? If you're on that phone call with them and you've determined that they would be a great client, that what you've got is perfect for them, that they need this, then the cover up could just be that they're just fearful. They're about to take a big step into, into another world of the unknown, or at least it feels that way to them. They're about to make a big investment and people wanna back off at that point because they're about to make this life-changing decision and they get fearful, they get a bit scared. And so naturally they wanna pull back a little bit. So you have to determine which is it. Is it genuine or is it a cover up? And if it's a cover up, we no longer deal with the spouse objection that they threw up because they're just empty words. If we decide that it is a, uh, it's a cover up, now we're dealing with actually why they're covering it up. They're fearful, they're you know confused, they've got more questions still, um, and we go down that track. This comes with good questioning. Um, if it is truly a spouse and a partner, and based on what they're saying and with your intuition, um, and the, asking the right questions, truly, they're not going to enroll on this call unless they speak to their spouse and you just missed it earlier on or you missed it on the form. Um, then at that point, uh, you don't want to push that person and, and because you're going to now cause bitterness and resentment and now they're not going to want to become a client. So if we've gone down that track at that point, then it might be the best thing to let them off the phone, speak to their spouse, but arrange a time to speak again. Don't now defer to email, right? Um, actually book a time to speak again and ask them, get a verbal commitment as to when they're gonna speak to their spouse. Don't say, you know, they, uh, they might say, hey, I'll get back to you, you know, in a week or I'll get back to you soon. Don't say, okay, great, speak to you soon. What? That's not maintaining control or authority on the call, right? You need to say, okay, great. When, when do you think you'll be able to speak to your spouse? Uh, I could probably speak to them tonight. Fantastic. You got any time tomorrow? Oh, uh, yeah, tomorrow afternoon. Cool. Why don't we book in 3 p.m. tomorrow? You'll speak to your spouse tonight. We'll chat again tomorrow. And uh, and then we can decide, you know, where we're going from there. Get it booked in, ready to go. You could also, if you felt like it was appropriate, um, then you could dive in just that little bit more and ask them what they think their spouse is going to say. Because, um, you know, we kind of want to get a gauge for whether does this look like it could be a goer or does it look like the spouse is actually going to be a... a a brick wall in the way of this person making the right decision for them, you know? So you can question them there as well. So there's a few things. I mean, we could go, I mean, we go super deep on this with our clients, um, but there's just a bit of a snippet for you on how you can uh, prevent and then handle that objection when it comes up. Hope this video has been helpful for you. And speaking of being a client, listen, if you are in a spot in your business right now where you have a great offer that you know people need, but you're not selling it as much as you should. Maybe it's the funnel, maybe it's the traffic, or maybe it's the way that you close, or maybe it's a combination of all three. Me and my team can help. We've scaled our business now to multiple seven figures every single year. We know this stuff like the back of our hand, and uh, we can just hand you on a silver platter, every system, every resource, every script that you could possibly need. Check us out, adclients.com. Adclients.com. There's a link in the description box. Come check us out, see what we're about. And there's a link somewhere on that page where you can check out our free trainings and inquire about becoming a client as well. Uh, with that, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, turn on the notification. We, we send out two new videos every single week that I think you'll really enjoy. And give us a thumbs up on this video. We really appreciate it. There'll be some videos popping up around here that we also think you might enjoy. So go click on one of those and I'll perhaps see you on one of those in just a second.